I, I can come with good news, but uh, but the overall message is that we're still defensive. We we still think or our best guess is that the the base case scenario for the market is for a. Uh, Around a 33% drawdown from the from the top in the S&P 500, so that's 3,200 by somewhere next year, mid next year. Uh, the situation is that we have a, a global energy crisis. It's most severe in Europe. We have seen a 6.5 percentage point increase in primary energy costs to GDP globally. That is GDP that being pulled out of consumption. And we see that pretty uh, evidently around in Europe. You know, consumer discretionary stocks in Europe, but also in Asia and Europe are very weak. That trend will, will continue. And then if we look at the nominal economy, it's still running very hot. Um, all the indicators we're getting, despite the tightening of financial conditions globally, it, it, it still hasn't really constrained the nominal economy enough. So, so central banks still have a, a, you know, a green light to tighten further. And tightening financial conditions more amid a global energy crisis will continue to cause headwinds for, for global equities. And we think the most important dynamic that will happen now over the next couple of quarters is the margin compression. So operating margins are right now two standard deviations above the historical average. But we have reached a limit of how much consumer facing companies can pass on rising input costs, simply because the delta on the volume sold would be higher than the P. So they could raise prices by 6%, but then the volumes would fall more than 6%. We have reached that limit now. And that means that you increasingly are hearing from consumer companies that they're going to eat into margins over the next year. And that downside risk to margins will cause massive headwinds for, for earnings growth over the next two, three quarters. And that combined with the energy crisis and tightening financial conditions, we think will cause the next dynamic and the next leg down in, in global equities. Peter, when is that margin compression likely to show up? And why is consensus reluctant to price that margin compression into the earnings picture at this point? Well, I think there's a general sense that you know, it takes a while for sales side analysts to update their view on the, you know, the ongoing dynamics in the macro environment. It doesn't really happen that fast. Um, I think that if you strip out energy and the material sector, so that is driven a large part by the mining companies, you, you will actually see that there was a margin compression taking place in Q2. But in the aggregate indices, it actually rebounded in Q2 because of energy and materials. If you see, look at the Nasdaq 100, it's coming down. And, and we think this ongoing, this ongoing you know, trend will continue and we'll see it. It will come back to haunt us in, in, in the Q3 earnings season that starts up in, in, in mid-October and then it will intensify over the, uh, over the fourth quarter and Q1. Uh, it's going to be, a, I think, a very long winter here in the Northern Hemisphere. And um, unfortunately, uh, that's the reality that the companies are, are facing uh, right now. But there, I mean, when we get to the 2023, uh, we will, I think, likely find a bottom and, and we'll come out of it. Um, the big question is how big this recession will be. I think this recession we, we're heading into is going to be a very different recession that none of us has really felt maybe for, for four decades. It's uh, it will be a recession in real terms, but then in nominal terms, we will be growing. So it, it will have a very, very difficult feeling to it than what we are used to.